Hello, my name is Professor John Bridges and I'm going to talk about our ExoMars exhibit for Summer Science. The Rosalind Franklin ExoMars rover is due for launch in September 2022, landing on Mars in June 2023. It's a 300 kilogram solar powered rover designed to drill down to two meters depth and to look for signs of ancient life on Mars. And there's a lot of UK involvement. The rover itself was built in the UK uh, by Airbus and Stevenage, and two of the key instruments, the Raman spectrometer and the PanCam, have been developed within the UK. And there's a lot of science involvement, such as landing site selection and science operation planning that's going on in the UK as well. So it's a very exciting mission. But why do we need ExoMars? Well, we want to see if there was ever life on Mars. And the reason for this can be shown on this postcard from the Curiosity rover to us here at the Royal Society Summer Exhibition. Now, the Curiosity rover has been driving around Gale Crater and up Mount Sharp since 2012. And here is the postcard, this image, which really summarizes why we want the ExoMars rover now. So what the Curiosity rover found was that all these hundreds of meters of sediment had trapped the, uh, a record of ancient lakes and rivers and a habitable environment. But we don't know whether Mars ever was inhabited. Was there ever life? So ExoMars has been designed with that question in mind, taking specific instruments like the Raman spectrometer to Mars drill into the subsurface where we're protected from the radiation to see if we can find ancient organics and the signs of ancient life. So here is the rover, 300 kilograms, solar power gives about 100 watts. That means we want to land in an equatorial region, a bit more about that in a minute. And there in the front, we see the two meter drill and that drills material brings it back up and then it's through an analytical drawer, it is brought into the main body of the rover where the, um, some of the key experiments like the Raman spectrometer are situated. And all the, the driving leading up to the selection of drill sites uh, will be done with the PanCam eyes on the mast here. So PanCam is really a central tool for science operations before we get to our drill sites. But building a rover for Mars is very challenging. In particular, we don't want to bring traces of um, terrestrial organics to Mars with this, but of course, because of course that would um, invalidate our results if we start finding um, organics if we didn't know whether they're from uh, sort of Mars. So here we see the Stevenage laboratories of Airbus with the rover being built um, under the most stringent, stringent uh, planetary protection, clean um, conditions. And at this stage, um, the rovers are being built, and by the way, um, do have a look at our time-lapse uh, imagery of the rover being constructed over nine months in these laboratories. You can see that on our Exploring Mars website. And during this build, um, calibration of the PanCam camera uh, was taking place as well. So the geometric calibration to make sure we have accurate lengths, distances and shapes was done once the PanCam cameras here uh, were fitted onto the rover. PanCam has a wide angle left and right lenses, we can see here on the top left, and also a high resolution camera in the middle. On the lower right here, we can see a filter wheel. And so we use filters um, for the light coming into the camera, and that helps us show different mineral assemblages. So again, that will help us select our key drill sites to answer the questions that we want to find out about ancient Mars. Once we've done the drilling and brought the powdered material into the main body of the rover, then we'll use some of the key instruments, including the Raman spectrometer. And the spectrometer part of that instrument was built in the UK at the University of Leicester. So what is Raman spectroscopy? Well, some of the light, a small fraction of the light, which is scattered uh, off the sample has an energy shift. And that energy shift here shown on this graph is very characteristic of different organic compounds or here um, 
an iron oxide mineral formed in the presence of water. So we use Raman spectroscopy both to determine the mineral assemblages and also to identify um, organic compounds. So that's a really key instrument. But we can't successfully carry out our mission unless we go to the right sort of landing site. So we had a five-year program of characterizing different landing sites and ultimately selecting Oxia Planum. Landing site selection is a balance between engineering constraints and the science attractions of a site. So in terms of the science, we wanted an area of ancient lakes and rivers, which can have trapped all the ancient um, organic compounds from the warm and wet period of Mars history about 4 billion years ago. But also we need to balance that against the need for an equatorial latitude so that the solar rays can generate enough power, low elevation so that the parachutes can operate and, and the right sort of slope distribution and rockiness. So there's a balance there. And we also want to find an area which has mineral assemblages, uh, specifically clays, um, showing the signs of water. So here it is, Oxoplanum, near the boundary between the Northern Lowlands and the ancient highlands, showing um, in a region of ancient lakes and ancient river deposits. So we think it'll be a really good area to satisfy um, Exomars' uh, key aim of searching for ancient life. And over the last few years, we've been covering up with different imagery. Here we see high-rise imagery, or orbital imagery, at very um, high resolution, 30 centimetres per pixel with the landing ellipse um, superimposed on it. Um, so we're really characterising in as much detail as we can um, what we expect to find. But it's not just the characterization of landing site, we also have to um, train up the team to work out how to do the rover operations. So here is um, the ExoFit uh, rover uh, trials, which happened in the Atacama Desert um, over the last few years. So the entire team is learning how to use the instruments and how to plan on a daily basis. So do check out all the videos uh, and quizzes and our hashtag building ExoMiles uh, at our Exploring Miles website. Um, there's a lot to see there. And I hope to see you uh, at our workshop on Sunday and hope you enjoy finding out all about ExoMiles.